Hey YouTube, BR1055 here. Uh, I wanted to make a video. It's not a response to anyone or anything in particular, but it's uh, more of a video response to the whole genre, if you will, of the whole Mac versus PC debate. And I'm going to kind of put this in the context of a history lesson. Because if you look at the two, probably, you look at the, at the, at the protagonist companies in these debates, Microsoft and Apple. And if you go back in the Wayback Machine to the very start of the personal computer industry, you're going to find that those are the two companies. I mean, th th there were a lot of companies and a lot of individuals that began on the ground floor of the, uh, of the PC industry, of the personal computer revolution, if you want to call it that. Uh, but Apple and Microsoft basically are today the only two left standing. Other people, other players you see in it came in later or were already existing companies that didn't have, uh, that, that, that came into the, that came into the scene later and not at the very beginning. And, and, and here's, here's what I mean. At the very beginning, uh, a small outfit in, uh, in I believe Albuquerque, New Mexico called MITS Micro Telemetry Systems uh, came out with a kit that they sold through Popular Science Magazine called the MITS Altair and basically it was a circuit board had an Intel microprocessor on it I think it was either a 4004 or an 8008 Intel microprocessor and you put the thing together, you bought the thing, you put it together, and basically all it could do was blink LED lights at you if you set the right sequence. You program the thing by setting sequences of, uh, of, of sense switches. That was your input, and then it would blink a series of LED lights coming back out. Now, the beauty of this is it was infinitely expandable. You could hook up... <laughs> You know, you could buy through electronics vendors. You could buy video cards. You, you, you could buy a card so that you could hook up a display to it. You could, uh, you could buy a card so that you could use it as as a as a remote terminal for uh, for a mini or a mainframe. Uh, you could buy a card that would let you, you know, a keyboard input, a tape reader. Okay. Now this is important because uh, the, there's this hobbyist fan base that grew up around this and Microsoft got started because uh, Bill Gates and his team basically wrote a basic programming language interpreter for the MITS Altair. And that's how Microsoft got started by uh, providing uh, ready-built software not even an OS, but a basic interpreter for this thing. So it started with MITS, uh, and then other companies sprang up doing the same thing. Uh, you might remember MSI. That, that was the uh, computer that you saw in, uh, in War Games. Uh, and it was about this time that Apple, that Steve Jobs, that Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak got together in Jobs' garage and, uh, and came out with the Apple One, which they sold in the San Francisco Bay Area through, uh, and, and that's, that's basically, and so, you know, they started a company to build, uh, uh, basically to build these Apple Ones, and Apple Ones were just kits. Uh, I think it was 78 when the Apple II came out, uh, which was a put together computer, all right, but, now see here's and and the the difference between off the bat between 
Apple, and Microsoft. Microsoft started out as a software developer, as a software provider for, you know, these PC kit folks. Apple started off as a hardware company building computers. And Apple, you know, and Steve Wozniak, everybody talks about, you know, Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs. And no doubt Jobs has always been uh, the, uh, the business brains behind Apple and the marketing really genius behind Apple. But Apple as a company uh, was really the, brand, or, or the, the Apple computer, the Apple I, the Apple II, were all the brainchild and all the work of Steve Wozniak. He designed the system and he designed the, didn't really have an operating system so much as a basic interpreter. He designed, he, he designed the, the, the system software for the Apple II, the original systems, uh, you know, what, what you booted up and you got, basically it booted into Apple's basic in, interpreter. It was Steve Wozniak that did that. That was his baby. So Apple has always started off had was started off and always has built its software, its system software, in conjunction with the hardware. That that continued through you know the Apple II series, uh, uh, and later on when they threw uh, disk drives, when when floppy disk drives became available for Apple II, the 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 Apple DOS, yes, there was such a thing as Apple DOS, was developed in house by Apple. Uh, you know, you know. Flat, uh, fast forward to the '80s when uh, when the Apple Lisa and and the and the original Macintosh came out. Same thing. Everything was developed. Hardware, software, developed all in house by Apple. Now, when it came to applications, of course, by that time, uh, Microsoft had made it big with. Uh, had got on the map by selling uh, DOS uh, to uh, to IBM when IBM decided to get into the personal computer market, and uh, so Microsoft uh, and 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 they they started you know developing applications for both the IBM DOS side of the house and they were also a huge Microsoft was a huge development partner with Apple uh, some folks would argue that the killer app that made the original Macintosh such a success was they had Word the WYSIWYG word processor Word along with uh, the uh, I, and I forget the name of it, but there was a, a desktop publishing tool that came along with the Mac. That's what that's what put the Macintosh on the map. Plus the fact that you know you could you know the GUI you could point and click. You didn't have to know a bunch of cryptic commands, uh, you know, and get around in a command line. So, but there again. It goes back to when you're doing these Mac versus PC uh, videos, just keep in mind, just keep in mind that what we're talking about are two very different kinds of companies, okay? Microsoft is a software company that has some divisions that dabble in hardware a little bit, you know, with the Zune and all that, okay? Apple is a hardware company that develops software or operating system software basically that works with their hardware and any software that Apple makes that Apple develops is designed to do one thing and that's to drive their hardware sales so I'm up on time hope you enjoyed the history lesson Thanks for watching.